This is part 76 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to use jQuery Tabs widget in an ASP.NET Web Forms application. So what is Tabs widget? It's a single content area with multiple panels, each associated with a header in a list. So here, we've got a header with three tabs in it. Each tab has a panel associated with it. At the moment, tab 1 panel is active. When we click on tab 2, its corresponding panel is activated. Similarly, when we click on tab 3, its panel gets activated. This tabs widget is similar to accordion widget, which we discussed in parts 74 and 75 of this video series. To produce this tabs widget, we require two steps. The first step is to write the required HTML, and then the second step is to write one liner of jQuery code. So look at the HTML structure here. First, we have a container div, and we have given this div an ID, ID equals tabs, and we have set the style attribute and set the width to 400 pixels so that the width of this widget does not occupy the entire width of the web form. So that's the container div. Inside the container div, at the moment, we've got unordered list. Instead of unordered list, you can also use ordered list. So the unordered list contains three list items. So these three list items represent these three tabs. And notice what we have within the list item. We have an anchor element, and within that anchor element, we have the title of the tab. So notice we have tab 1, tab 2, tab 3, which are displayed as tabs here. And if you look at the anchor element, it also has got the href attribute. And we have set the href attribute to hash tab 1. Okay, so these three list items within the unordered list represent the tabs widget headers. Okay, and these three div elements here, they represent the panels that are associated with each tab header. Okay, so first div here is the panel for tab one, second div is the panel for tab two, so on and so forth. So the important thing to keep in mind here is the ID of this div here. Look at the ID, it is tab 1. And look at the value that we have set to the href attribute, hash tab 1. So this ID must be equal to the hash value here. Okay, So that way we are tying this div element as the panel to the first tab. So similarly, second div element is the panel for second tab because the IDs match. Okay, so that's the HTML that we require. And we need one liner of jQuery code. So find the container div. The container div has the ID tabs. So find it using the jQuery ID selector and call the tabs function. So this HTML and this line of jQuery code is going to produce this widget. I have already typed the exact HTML and jQuery code. Here it is. So we have the same HTML that we have seen on the slide. And within our jQuery ready function, we are calling the tabs function on the container development. When we run this, it produces this tabs widget. Look at this. When I click on tab 1, the panel is activated. This is tab 2 and tab 3. All right. So at the moment, the content is present at design time. It's static content on the page. So it's very simple to produce this. Um, you know, tabs widget. But what if we have the data in a database table? So we've got countries table here with ID name and description columns. Now what we want to do is produce this tabs widget in an ASP.NET Web Forms application using this database data. Okay, the tab headers should be the name of the countries, and the panels should have the country description. Okay, so let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. We already have a web service which retrieves the country data from the database table. We also have added a service reference to that web service. So I'm going to add a web form to this project. And the first thing that we need to do is produce you know, this kind of an HTML. So the first thing that we need is a container div. So we already have a div element here. Let's give it an ID. Let's set that to tabs. And let's also set the width of this to 600 pixels. All right. So within the div element, what do we need? We need an unordered list. So I'm going to include that here, unordered list. 
and within that we need to generate a list item for every row that we retrieve from the database table. We can do it two ways. We can write the jQuery code to produce this HTML. We can also write and uh, use the ASP.NET repeater control to do that for us. That way the code will be much cleaner. So I'm actually going to drag and drop the repeater control. So this repeater control is going to generate the list items. Okay, and then we are going to use another repeater control to generate these div elements. So outside of the list item, I'm going to drag and drop another repeater control. Okay, so we have two repeater controls here. Now we'll come back to this HTML in just a bit. Now let's go to the code behind file, call the web service, retrieve the country data, and bind it to repeater one and repeater two. So let's flip to the code behind file. So the namespace within which our service is present is services. So services dot, we have the country service soap client. Let's create an instance of that. So that's our proxy class. Client dot get countries. So that is actually returning, you know, an array of country objects, services dot country. Okay. So let's go ahead and store that in a variable services dot country. So we are going to get an array. Let's create a variable of type array. So this variable now contains the country's data. Now I'm going to use that as the data source both for repeater one and repeater two. So repeater one dot data source equals countries and repeater one dot data bind. Similarly, we need to bind the data to repeater two control. So let's make a copy of this and change the IDs. Okay, so we have binded the database data to both these repeater controls. Now, within repeater one, I'm going to use item template. Now, we already have the unordered list here. After that, what do we need? We need a list item. So inside that unordered list for every row in the database, we need a list item. So I'm going to hard code the list item as well here. Okay, and within list item, we need anchor element. So let's include anchor element. And anchor element should have the href attribute set to hash. And we need to generate an ID here. So at the moment within the database table, we have got four rows. Okay, so for each row, we should set, uh, generate a list item like this. And we should set href attribute to a unique ID. Okay, now we can use this ID column, but the problem with that is that it's an integer. But if you look at the IDs of HTML elements, they cannot start with a number. They have to start with a letter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use letter C underscore and then append the integer ID that we get from the database. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Okay, and we have to bind the integer value. So I'm going to use the data binding function, which is eval. So angle brackets, percentage, hash, and I'm going to call the eval function. And we want to bind the ID value, ID column value. So for the first list item, it's going to be C underscore one. For the second list item, it's going to be C underscore two, so on and so forth. So that's our anchor element. So let's go ahead and close that. And what do we want as the header? We want the name of the country as the header. Right, just like how we have tab one as the header here. In our example, we want this country name to be the header. Okay, so here I'm going to again use the eval function, angle brackets percentage hash eval, and we want to bind whatever value we have in the name column. That's going to return us the country name. So this piece of code is going to generate, you know the unordered list with all the list items. Okay, next we want to generate the div elements. So we have another repeater for that. So within this repeater, again, let's go ahead and use the item template. And what do we need? We need a div element and the ID must match with what we have set in the href attribute. Okay, so we want a div element and we want an ID for that. And ID 
just like here within the href attribute it should start with c underscore and then the actual id value from the db so i can actually copy this entire thing and paste it right here so what are we going to get c underscore one two three depending on the row that we are currently looping over okay so here is the double quote beginning this is ending here so let's go ahead and close the div element and within the body of the div element what we need we need to include the panel content and the panel content should be the country description so I'm going to use eval function one more time so angle brackets percentage hash eval and we want to bind this to country description okay that's it so the first repeater is going to generate us the unordered list with the list items and the second repeater is going to generate us the div elements okay and that's as far as HTML is concerned within our head section we need to include the required jQuery and CSS files and call the tabs function so we need the jQuery itself we need jQuery UI CSS we need jQuery UI JavaScript and let's include another script section here so dollar document dot ready find the container dev so what is the container dev it has got this ID tabs so let's use the jQuery ID selector find that using the ID tabs and on that let's call the tabs function right so let's go ahead and save the changes and let's run this so country names should be the headers look at that we have India US UK and Canada at the moment India panel is active and when we click on US we get its panel activated similarly UK and Canada So here we have the HTML and the jQuery code. We are using two repeater controls to produce the HTML that the jQuery tabs widget expects. Now here within the jQuery code, we have also specified a couple of options. Let's actually discuss these options in detail. So here we have the code behind file and here are the options. These options are similar to jQuery accordion widget. So the first option here is collapsible. Now this is similar to jQuery accordion widget. By default, at least one panel need to be active. If you want to collapse all the panels, including the one that is currently active, then set this option to true. Now at the moment, within this example, we didn't set any options active. Uh, I mean, we didn't set any options. So look at this. When I click on this panel that is active, nothing happens. Now if you want to collapse it, then you'll have to set collapsible to true. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's set collapsible to true. Save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this. And look at this. Now when I click on this, the panel is collapsed. Okay. Now let's look at active. Now this option can be set to a Boolean value or an integer value. Now, if you set this to a Boolean false, then it's going to collapse all panels. Now, look at this. When we load this page, by default, you know, it shows the first panel. Okay. Now, you know, when the web page loads, if you want all the panels to be collapsed, then set active to false, just like accordion. So let's go ahead and set this to false. Save the changes. Reload this page. Look at this. You know, we have all the panels collapsed and when we click on that the panel gets activated you can also set you know this option to an integer for example if I set it to 1 the corresponding panel gets activated so let's save the changes reload this page and look at what's going to happen look at that United States panel is active here why is that why is not the first panel active that's because you know these panels use 
zero based index. So India is at zero index, United States is at first index, UK is at second index. Since we have set active to one, you know, it activated United States. And the last option that is particularly useful is event. At the moment, to activate the panels, we are using click event. But if you want, you know, to activate the panels using mouse over event, then use event option. The default is click. So if I specify the event option, and I'm going to set that to mouse over, let's save the changes. Look at this. Let's reload this. Now, this is going to react to mouse over event. Look at this. When I mouse over Canada, that panel is activated. On mouse out and mouse over, you know, since we have set collapsible to true, you know, it collapses it when I mouse over on it again. Thank you for listening and have a great day.